how does a couple of laps around the Swan River compared to say going around the Bay Run in the morning around dawn well this is the route today and you can see there's three bridges that's one loop and then I went and did another loop a longer loop and then I did a third loop and the first loop I think was about 11 to 12 kilometers so a bit longer than the Bay Run and we've come down to the Swan River there's the Narrows Bridge this is where all the cycling groups normally meet in the morning about six don't know why they weren't here and we're on the path off we go and yes it was a beautiful sunrise uh, and I just couldn't help myself but uh, had to stop and take a photo because it was pretty spectacular this is coming into Elizabeth Keys this is a big touristy area where there's the bell tower there's this iconic bridge which has been built uh, which kind of snakes its way across this little bit of harbour over on the left hand side there's cafes here there's a fancy hotel which I'm not sure if it's opened here on the left yet or not there's ferry wharfs here uh, boat tours all that kind of stuff and what I discovered maybe this is where all the cyclists are meeting today god there's bloody packs of them just getting in the way of everyone I don't know damn cyclists maybe the coffee's good here I don't know uh, but let's get on the next part so they've got these nice palm trees in here which unfortunately narrow the path a little bit but hey you know it looks good and we'll just zoom around here for a little bit just looking at this sunrise because it was pretty good and that's a very noisy siren down on the freeway uh, the reason I put this in is if to our right here in this car park there's a big bike hire shed so if you're ever over here you can do that and this is what it's like crossing the causeway on the existing bike path slash pedestrian path around dawn now you can see there's there's no lights um, thankfully the uh, cyclists have got some flashing stuff on but uh, yeah unless the pedestrians are walking single file it's very hard to get past them now I had um, low flying like cockatoos going in one direction and then almost got cleaned up by a bunch of low flying ducks going the other way but for some reason I can't find that footage this seems to be a well used route for I guess people just I don't know if these people are just out for a training ride or cycling into work given they've got a backpack on they might be going to the office I have spotted uh, one company oh god which one is it one of the major mining companies or gas companies has this fantastic um, bike facility right off the cycle path now at this point I've slowed this down because you have got a choice of following that guy on the uh, on the footpath or getting out here on the road and at this time of the morning there's next to no traffic so pretty much everyone rides on the road later on in the day when the mix of people changes here to more families etc you get lots of families and kids etc riding on the path but this time of the day I mean you know not a car in sight pretty much nice view out there over to the city and we've pretty much finished our loop um, we're going to go under the Narrows Bridge and then jump back on it for our second loop where we're going to go out a bit further to the Mataranga Bridge. And uh, this is where I took that opening footage of the rowers under the bridge. Um, and I think this is one of the busiest routes into the city uh, for cycling. Now, uh, that electric scooter person <laughs> was very unhappy with those two cyclists uh, passing me and in fact she called uh, one or both of them an effing idiot and I, I thought afterwards that really displays the difference between people who are getting along under their own power by cyclists versus people using the, these electric scooters who are essentially uh, drivers on a two-wheeled electric device and they still have that, that driving mentality of uh, you know gotta go fast gotta abuse people blah 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 now around this section here this is like the bay run where it's uh, that the pedestrians don't have a separated path to themselves so to speak and you spend a lot of time either going well around them on the, the grass that's the good thing about this the bay run you'd be disappearing into the harbor if you did that um uh, whereas in that the other sections there's completely separated bike and pedestrian paths sometimes with meters of space in between uh the iconic Oh, another iconic bridge the Mataranga bridge I think I got that right um, you know huge bridge built to get people to and from the footy stadium which we went past on the other side of the river and this just shows how quickly the path deteriorates once you get away from uh, the iconic stuff on the right here this is Trinity College this is one of um, Perth's uh, flash private schools uh, yeah they certainly got the good real estate 
and they've got their rowing sheds there. So a lot of the rowers I saw out this morning, I think, were Trinity. And uh, interestingly enough, on the way there, I saw a couple of kids in school uniform riding that way. And I thought, what are they doing out here at six o'clock in the morning? They had school bags on, they were in school uniform. I think they were rowers riding to, um, well, there's some more rowers or another rower riding to rowing training. And I thought, you know, how many people in Sydney where we've got, oh yeah, Crocs on the bike, I, th- I thought that was just worth filming. So, you know, around uh, Five Dock, etc., we've got all these rowing clubs. How many people cycle to rowing training in the morning or the afternoons? I mean, I always see a couple of bikes parked out the front, but school kids? I don't know. Anyway, here's the third bridge in our series, um, which I've got no idea what it is. It's, I think it was a railway bridge that they tacked some car lanes onto some years ago. I'm not sure. Uh, not as nice as the other bridges, that's for sure. Just a bit of a, a concrete dump. Um, and I thought what I'd do here is just stop at this new East Perth development and take a little panoramic video. Uh, very nice kind of three-storey houses around here, you know, architect designed, etc., um, nice part of the world to be and what they've done is there's this little harbour or inlet or whatever you want to call it here they've built uh, nice stuff around it and plonked a couple of cafes here which is where I stopped for breakfast but let's get out of there we don't want to see what I ate and uh, you know they've, they've built this really nice development it's, it's green it's leafy it, the, the place looks nice etc and anyway, we've come back to Elizabeth Key because we don't need to see all of that. And I thought I would take a shortcut through the city because I had to be back for an 8 o'clock phone call and it's 8.01, 8.02, I was late. Uh, and I thought there's no way in hell I'm going up the left-hand side of some turning cement trucks, even if I've got a bike lane. I, you know, I just don't trust them. So I waited until obviously traffic around the corner was stuck and they weren't going anywhere and off we go. So this is Barrack Street where we have a nice bike lane up the side and I'm going to turn left onto St George's Terrace which is the main drag through the city it's like George Street so I just thought what's it like in you know the morning peak riding through the CBD and I've got to say I don't know whether it's because I'm used to riding in the Sydney CBD but I found it pretty chilled and relaxing the whole CBD is 40 kilometers an hour end to end and I think the drivers really do stick to that speed it's like that for you know, uh, from pretty much down to the causeway up to Parliament House. And so no one seems to worry about pedestrians crossing the road, i.e. jaywalking, because cars aren't moving fast enough to hit them and kill or injure them. You know, if, if someone steps out, well, you've got plenty of time because you're not going that fast. It's a really interestingly different mindset that if you slow down the traffic, you can make the place a lot more people friendly. So we're heading up here towards the Barracks Arch and Parliament House, and, and this is a bit of a slope. So I thought, yeah, I'll just duck off here and take to the footpath, uh, you know, slow down and wait for those passengers to get out of the way, and off we go. I didn't really want to stay on the road up there. This is completely legal in WA because they don't have these silly laws about adults can't ride on the footpath. Uh, there's the Barracks Arch on the right, and there's Parliament House, and uh, this is Malcolm Street leading up to Kings Park, and we've got the freeway down there on our left. So there's our triple loops that we did, and very scenic. Like I said, I think the first one was about uh, 11 kilometres or so. The second one, the, I don't know. Anyway, the, the three of them added up to 43 kilometres, I think. Um, beautiful way to start the day. Pretty flat. Uh, I've done it when it's windy and it's pretty tough, I'll tell you that. But certainly, you know, it gives the Bay Run a, a run for its money. Now, the next couple of minutes are just uh, some footage that I shot with a handheld camera um, as I was riding along oh, well after the sun had come up. And yes, I don't have steady cam or anything like that. And trying to ride, change gears, brake, steer, etc., and uh, take video one handed. It's not that easy and it's probably not that sensible, so apologies for any really crummy uh, videography. But uh, yeah, you can see the nice well, playing fields, or whatever, they're on the other side of the road. Uh, that's where they have circuses and stuff when the circus comes to town. Um, and yeah, great view out over the water. You've got to be careful you don't uh, hit the swans or the, or the ducks around here. 
Uh, that's the Narrows Bridge right off there in the distance. You can just kind of see that flat whitish thing. Yeah, the old light balance was uh, not too good and I was not going to be fiddling with anything one-handed so yeah, you just have to put up with it. Um, and one thing I've always found about the bike counting along here, uh, I do wonder if it kind of undercounts the cyclists riding into the city along here because a lot of them ride on the road out there to the right and they come over the causeway on the road rather than riding on the bike path. Uh, I mean, that's the more confident cyclist. So, yeah, the bike, part, the bike counters are a great idea, um, but they're only counting people on the path. They're not actually counting every cyclist. Of course, the other problem with them is, you know, you've just seen me go across the bike counters numerous times, same counter several times. So they're, they're counting, uh, well, not exactly individual cyclists, but more, um, you know, uh, cycling journeys, I guess, is probably a better way of putting it. And we're just back in Elizabeth Key now, going over this snaky bridge at low speed, and we're going to end up, yeah, lots and lots of sculpture and uh, artworks and stuff, and we're going to end up at what I always think of as uh, Pingu, uh, the silver penguin. I don't know if it is Pingu, but that's what I call him. That's it. End of story. <laughs>